Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to make lemon cranberry scone, so I thought I would show you how I make it. First, it is two cups of flour, <clears throat> and I put all the dry ingredients in first. There's lots of steps that uh, people say you should take and do this this way, and, but I'm for easy and fast and quick because I do a lot of baking, as most of you know. That was a tablespoon of baking powder. And I'm going to put in half a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of sugar, and if you're going to make this a savory one, a savory scone like um, herbs or cheese, um, just put in one tablespoon. Um, now I'm going to put in a half a cup of butter and you can use butter or margarine or anything, any fat that you want. You can use lard, shortening, uh, whatever you'd like. <clears throat> but I'm going to use, I am going to use margarine today. And what you're going to do is just measure it out, but I don't want you to just plop it in there. What I want you to do is just, if, you have, if you're have, if using butter, you can just cut it in little squares, but I'm using margarine for this. Lots of people say that um, scones should only be made with butter, like real butter, uh, or shortening, or crisp butter flavored Crisco, but you know what? Um, it's fine with the margarine, like absolutely fine. And what you want to do, just like pastry or making biscuits, is you just want to crumble up the butter. You don't want to completely incorporate it. You want it in little bitty chunks. So that's why I dropped it in in chunks. I'm just going to mix it for a minute. And what I'm looking for is for the big chunks to break up into a little bit tinier chunks. And I'll show you what that looks like. So about... I guess 30 seconds and we're done and what we want is it for it to be very crumbly you can still see the little bits of butter and what that does is help the biscuit to rise <clears throat> um, now I'm going to add two eggs and again people say beat the eggs or blah 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 I've made a ton of scones I've never beaten my eggs the rest of the this and the milk um, and I'm going to show you. I'm actually not going to use milk. I'm going to use something else. I'm just going to show you. I put the eggs and the liquid uh, in together and we don't over mix it. So what I'm using is, no, it's not grape cranberry. What it is actually is whey. And I didn't go out and buy whey or anything like that. Uh, in my previous video, I made yogurt. And what I actually wanted was some uh, cream cheese. So what I did was I took my yogurt, um, got a bowl, put a strainer in the bowl, and I put cheesecloth, or um, actually I used a, an old pillowcase, and I stuck it in the fridge overnight with a plate on top of it and a weight. I just used, uh, I had a container of leftovers, and I just put it on top. And what happens is, the liquid releases from the yogurt, and you can do this with store-bought yogurt if you want, uh, but I make my own yogurt, so, <clears throat> and what's left over in the bowl is whey, and I don't throw it out. I use it in everything that calls for milk in a recipe, so my bread, my scones, my biscuits. Um, it's not going to be creamy, but it has the acid that you want to help raise, uh, rise your scones. So I'm going to put that whole half cup in there so this is the whey liquid and if I find I'm not going through it fast enough like um, I've had this about a week and I I get a little bit nervous that it's going to turn bad so I know that I use it basically in half cup increments either half cup or a cup that sort of thing so I put it in uh, either ice cube trays freeze them and then pop them into a ziploc bag or I put it in half cup measurements in ziploc baggies and uh, freeze it and then I just pull it out whenever I need to make bread or or anything like that it's basically tastes like a little bit like a sour milk almost uh, but it just works incredible for bread products so now what I'm going to do is mix it until it's just mixed 
So I've got it on two. Now you can definitely, definitely do this by hand. This is not, um, this is not, a mixer is not required. So I'm just going to tidy up the space here for a second, crush my eggs, put them in my compost, and I'll be right back with the next easy step. Okay, so what I've done is I've put a half a cup of flour in my bowl. And I forgot to tell you, um, I forgot to put it in. I put in half a teaspoon of lemon extract. So this. Um, you can use a real lemon. Use real lemon juice. I would use half a lemon and half, great half the um, rind of a lemon and put that in there. Because I have small children, they like the lemon flavor, but they find that the, the rind of a lemon is too strong for them. So I just put in lemon extract. And you'll see that the dough is really quite um, liquidy. Don't worry about that. That's exactly what you want. And that's why I put the half cup of flour on my board. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, this is very crucial when it comes to baking, um, biscuits and bread and stuff, is not beating it up. So I put it on the floured board, I'm just pushing it down and I'm folding it. What I'm doing is incorporating some more of the flour, but by folding it I'm creating layers in my dough. So you'll see I'm just folding it. I'm not not messing with it too much. And what I'm looking for is slightly moist dough, but not goopy. If you want to make super easy, you don't want to cut them, you don't want to do this, add a little bit more flour and then take a spoon and just drop them onto the pan like a drop biscuit and you can just make biscuits like that. You don't have to add this extra flour. But what you don't want to do is just knead it like you would dough. You're folding to create layers in your biscuit. So I think that feels pretty good. And of course I forgot one other thing and that's the cranberries. So I'm just going to put some cranberries on here, about a quarter of a cup. I'm going to mix that in. And then I'm going to put another quarter cup. So you put in a half cup altogether. I should have done that right at the beginning. Uh, not in the dough, but once I put it on the counter, I should have put it in then. So I'm just making sure that these are all in. So we've got at least a few cranberries in every, every uh, biscuit. So again, I'm just folding. And you want to do this as little as possible. I'm doing this too much. Uh, but they're still going to turn out fine. Uh, but the least amount of times you do this, the flakier and lighter uh, they will turn out. And you'll see when they're done. And uh, Christmas time is a really great time to make these. Um, I make, a lot of people go, oh well yeah I make those at Christmas, but I don't make them in the summer and all that kind of stuff. I am lucky that I have a very cool house. Uh, number one and number two uh, I really find that at this time of year people are super busy and they eat out a lot more often because they're so busy so this is a super quick grab and go meal uh, I mean it's definitely you can do anything with this you can put little bits of ham and cheese in these and that's a meal to go like my kids play a lot of sports they can grab one of those, you know, they, they have sports right away after school. They can do their chores, get their homework done, eat one of these, at, or uh, even if they don't have time for that stuff, they can just go and eat it on the way or eat it on the baseball bench or, or whatever. So ham and cheese, um, bacon. Uh, at Christmas time I'll make these and I'll put... Uh, white chocolate chips in them or really dark chocolate chips whatever kind of combo you like uh, you can make them a cocoa flavored so what you do is just replace I replace 
a half of cup of the flour with a half, uh, like the two cups of flour. I take one and a half cups of flour and put one cup of um, cocoa powder. And that works really well. So then what you want to do, you can uh, push this out and use a cookie cutter. Make sure to go straight in and straight back up. Don't twist it. If you twist it, they won't rise. Now, how thick do you want this dough is completely up to you. I do about an inch, and what happens is it turns into a two-inch biscuit. It basically doubles in the oven. So uh, I'm just going to grab my parchment paper. You do not have to use parchment paper. Uh, I just find that it makes a little bit even more even um, browning on the bottom, but you definitely, definitely do not need it. Um, this is a half batch, and I make six scones out of it. You can make a dozen little ones. You can make one big huge one just leave it like this and just perforate it and then you just break it apart that's completely fine uh, it takes a little bit longer to bake but um, I'm gonna make this a little bit more rounded and what I'm gonna do is cut this into what size am I gonna cut this into let's do we'll do six that's what I normally do and it's a good size for for anybody even my husband it's a good size so these are lemon cranberry ones and you don't don't worry about being exact and you just lay it on your cookie tray and I put like I said I put parchment down and remember these are going to double so this is quite a bit like 70 a 70 gram scone is about 200 calories so that's quite a bit uh, they're quite dense, quite heavy, and I'll show you what they look like on the tray. I've got my oven heated to 375 degrees, and I'm going to bake them for 15 minutes and pull them out, and then I'll show you how I top these with a little bit of um, powdered sugar glaze, and we'll be right back. Okay, while those are baking, I decided uh, I'm going to make it, well I knew I was going to make another batch, so I figured I would show you how to put the ingredients in at the right time. This one, I am making a more savory one, so I put in three quarters of a teaspoon of salt into this one, and only one and a half tablespoons of sugar. So, I'm going to show you, this one I'm going to make cheese and bacon, and I'll show you I don't, I don't have any ham defrosted right now. All my ham's in the freezer. So this is, you can see, just somewhat mixed up. Needs a little bit more help. So I'm going to leave it somewhat mixed up. Put in about a quarter cup of cheese. And what I have here is, it's called uh, real crumbled bacon. I get this at Costco. I've just got a little bit left in this bag. I've got another bag there if I need it. So about a quarter of a cup. Oh yeah, I'll probably have enough in here. And then some of this. Now the reason I use this is one, it's real bacon. Um, and two, it, um, it's way cheaper than making your own. To buy a pack of bacon that will make oh, about a quarter of a pound of crumble uh, one pack of bacon here costs uh, about five or six dollars uh, and that'll only make about a quarter of this package. This costs six bucks. So I just keep them in my freezer. I buy a few and lots of times it'll go on sale and I can get it for like five bucks. So that's Canadian prices and uh, Americans, even though the dollar is basically par, uh, it's still cheaper uh, on stateside for some reason. So. You can get it fairly cheap. So I'm just making this one a bacon cheese one. I'm just going to show you. I just want to show you how easy it is. So that's when I would normally mix it in. We need a little bit more flour. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to cut it into um, 
the triangles. And so that way you can see what a meal one would look like. Now again, the size that I'm making, they're about 300 calories. So definitely uh, enough for a meal and put a side salad on it. Uh, and it's super quick, easy, easy meal to make. So again, I'm just folding it because I'm creating layers that's going to allow the dough to puff. And uh, when you see these ones come out in about, uh, the cranberry ones come out in about three minutes, uh, you'll see um, how nice they are. Um, I'm kind of mixing this a little too much. It kind of got talking and started to knead. <laughs> you need to not do that. So I'm just putting it in a roundish shape. And what I've done is I've reserved a little bit of the cheese and a little bit of the bacon. And what I'm going to do is when it comes out of the oven, I'm going to immediately sprinkle on some cheese and some bacon on top, just a little bit. And it just kind of is like, to me, it's kind of, this is what kind I am sort of statement. So again, I'm doing it about an inch thick, cutting it in half and cutting the halves into thirds. Don't worry about perfect sized scones. I don't. I've got kids that range from 15 to 6. So different sizes actually works for me. Um, I don't actually eat these because I'm on a diet. So uh, three of my kids get one. Uh, actually, four of my kids get one and my husband gets two because he works a, a very hard physical job. I'm not going to tray these right now. I'm going to use the exact same tray I'm using for the other ones because they're done in two minutes. Uh, and when those ones come out, I'll show you um, what they look like so you know doneness. So I'll be right back. Oops. Okay, so I just pulled the scones out of the oven. And if you look, they really puffed up nice. Nice brown bottom, and that was exactly 15 minutes. It doesn't seem to matter what oven I've used. Um, I do it for 375, for 15 minutes, and it comes out perfect every single time. So I'm just going to, um, I have a cooling rack that I use for these, so I'm just gonna pop them on there. Uh, be careful, they're hot. I've been baking so long and have my own restaurant that I seem to be fairly impervious to heat. Um, so it doesn't bug me, but you can use an oven mitt or use some tongs. I'm not completely impervious though. If you see, I don't know if you can see that. I burnt my hand uh, two weeks ago on a 400 degree element. I was lifting the pot off of my pot roast and this was so deep and I hit the element on the top of my oven but it seems to be healing well. It's going to scar for a while but I'll live. Anyways, um, I'm going to I'm going to cool this pan down. Never put anything you're going to bake uh, on a hot pan because what it does is it melts and then starts to cook so you end up with this bleh, like this. So I'm just going to run cold water on the underneath of this. They always say not to reuse parchment, but when it comes to baking, uh, cookie baking, as long as, especially scones, it has no no drips on it, go ahead and reuse it. I I reused tons and tons of parchment um, in my restaurant, so never ever worry about that. I'm going to cool the pan down, bake them, and I'll show you what these ones look like, and we'll ice the, the scones, uh, the cranberry scones. Okay, so these scones are warm, and what I'm going to do is ice them. Uh, and what I'm going to do is make a very, very simple glaze. Uh, recipe I couldn't really tell you. Let's just plop a couple of spoons in here. And I've just got some milk. You can use milk or cream, whatever you'd like. And just put a little bit in. Mix it up and it's going to be real lumpy. So, and this, I put too much cream in it, so let's make more. You don't want it watery, but you don't, it doesn't need to be a thick paste either, a, a drizzle. And it's, it's always lumpy at first, 
So what I do is I mix it, let it sit a little bit, and you want it to be kind of, let me see, the consistency of whipping cream, just that kind of, um, not whipped cream, but a thick cream. And that'll be plenty. It will dry up and dry out. Now the icing is not necessary at all. I just find that it adds a nice presentation, number one. Uh, number two, it gives um, a nice contrast to the cranberries that have a slight tang to them. Now these are dried commercial uh, cranberries, so they actually have been sweetened, so it's not really they're not super sour like a, a regular dried cranberry would be. These ones have been soaked in uh, sugar. So it's not, it's definitely not necessary. But when you're trying to make kids happy, sometimes you add little bits. And husbands too. I know my husband. Uh, he works very physically hard and he really requires his calories. So, so then this is the consistency. It's a little bit lumpy so you can Wait, that will work itself out in 15, 20 minutes probably. Uh, but in order to uh, be expedient, we'll do this. And what I do is I just drizzle it on, use the back of my spoon, kind of spread it. You don't want to put a ton because it's just going to drip off anyways because it's quite thin. Like I said, about the consistency of cream. And I probably, I don't know, you guys can judge for yourself. Don't throw out leftover icing. You can always find something to put icing on. <laughs> icing on. I just put it in my fridge. I make a lot of scones and stuff. Like you guys know, I have uh, a big family. So, and this is just a glaze. It's not meant to be an icing like like a cake or, or anything like that. It's just a glaze to just give a little bit of that. I'm just going to use it all, whatever. Drip a little on the sides. And as it cools, don't put this on straight from the oven because it will literally just run right off. Uh, but if it's warm, it takes to it really nice, it absorbs some of it, and uh, the excess will just drip. And the kids like to lick that. With, pick it up with their finger and lick it. So I'm just going to let this cool. Uh, the kids are home in about five hours. It'll be the perfect after school snack. It'll fill them right up till uh, dinner, which is a couple, few hours later and uh, everybody's happy and it's a perfect especially the cheese and bacon one it's a perfect perfect uh, take to school type thing it's so easy compact high calorie uh, it's basically got everything especially this one it's got your protein your carbs uh, your fruits and vegetables dairy and sugar <laughs> especially these ones and like I said at Christmas I'll mix in some white chocolate chips and you can pack them in a pretty little box and that's a gift and it literally take took five minutes to put together 15 minutes to bake and you're done I mean it's super super stupid simple so anyways um, I'll show you the bacon and cheese ones when I take them out and what they look like and that will be that for scones okay so the bacon cheese ones are out and I'm going to show you something. You might see that these ones are not as risen. And if you remember, I said that I was starting to knead it and I was over mixing it. This is what happens when you over mix it. They don't puff up as high. I'm going to show you the other ones. So you only want to mix it about five or six times. Fold it. Look at the difference. Ouch, that one's hot. That's the difference by over mixing them. So while they just came out of the oven, I'm going to put a little bit of cheese on each one because these are still super hot. These are still going to be great, but they're just not as puffy, that's all. So they'll just be a little bit more dense. And that looks about good. Try not to pile them because then they don't melt as nicely. 
And then I've got a smidge of bacon left in this bag. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of bacon on top. Now you can definitely do this with your own bacon as well. Uh, but I like this because a lot of the fat has been rendered out of it. It's really just the meat. And somebody might ask, can you do it with imitation bacon? You can, uh, but it'll taste like imitation bacon. So that's up to you and what your preferences are and how picky your family is about it. Because my family, when it comes to bacon, they only want real bacon. If I had imitation bacon, I think they'd probably take me out to the back 40. So <clears throat> that's it for scones. That cheese will melt. I'm going to leave these ones on the pan so it keeps the heat for quite some time. And that's it. So we have lemon cranberry scones, bacon and cheese scones, dinner, dessert. <laughs> okay, and that's it.